So coming to that uh, capacity versus design, it is mentioned here in capacity analysis, size, shape, material strengths, and cross-sectional dimensions are known, and maximum load carrying capacity of structure is calculated. Capacity analysis is generally carried out for the existing structures. However, in design of a structure, load, span, and material properties are known, and cross-sectional dimensions and amount of reinforcement are to be determined. So both uh, analysis and design will be our topic of discussion so as a civil engineer as a structural engineer your major objective will be to design safe and economical structure safety should be kept in mind for all applied loads throughout the life and economy means that it should be cost effective, more service life, durable and economical structures, and safe as well. There is one relationship given here that economy is inversely proportional to self weight, but in bracket it is mentioned more valid for steel structures because, because in steel structures, cost is directly related with the weight of the steel however even in concrete structures when the self weight will get bigger then footing size will also be increased and with more self weight the lateral forces will also increase so even in concrete structures uh, reducing the self weight will definitely improve the economy so in ultimate strand design in plain and enforced concrete one and two we will be working on these four combinations and more importantly first two combinations we will apply to design the elements dead and live load cases we want to consider and 1.2 dead and 1.6 live the combination which will normally govern but if self weights are bigger then 1.4 dead may also govern so out of them the load which will be higher and the combination which will give us higher demand will be used and we want to design the structures using all combinations but as i said in prc1 and 2 we will focus more on dead and live load and later loads and uh, in which wind and earthquake will become important will be covered in some other subject so basically two combinations we will discuss in detail and in ultimate stand design reduction factors which are applied on the material stand side are summarized in this table for bending or flux gear 10 percent reduction is proposed however in shear and torsion 25 percent reduction is still applicable and this reduction also gives us idea about the consistency of test results and as well as the failure type 
so shear failure will be more brittle and uh, dangerous test results are not very much consistent so predictions are still not very good so that is the reason more strict reduction factor is still present however flugier behavior is quite well experimented results are consistent so only 10% reduction is applied in columns depending on the confinement around the bars reduction factors are proposed since columns with spirals are more relatively more ductile than column with ties so that is the reason a column with spiral has less reduction as compared with the column with ties in last lecture we talked about shrinkage briefly and here there is one little example in the coming slides which we can apply to understand the shrinkage and creep so shrinkage is reduction in volume of concrete due to loss of water excess water will evaporate some water will be used in hydration of cement coefficient of shrinkage varies with time coefficient of shortening is 0.0025 at 28 days and at 3 months and 12 months it is proposed so shrinkage we can estimate by multiplying the length with with this shrinkage coefficient excessive shrinkage can be avoided by proper curing during first 28 days because almost half of the total shrinkage takes place during this period and more important is first 7 days in terms of creep there is also a table given with reference to specific creep which re is related with the compressive strength of concrete and it is summarized in terms of per megapascal stress on concretes of different compressive strength so for 21 21 megapascal compressive strength of concrete specific creep mentioned is 145 into 10 raised to power minus 6 per megapascal so this creep is a slow deformation of material over considerable length of time at constant stress or load creep deformations for a given concrete are practically proportional to the magnitude of applied stress at any given stress high strength concrete show less creep than lower strength concrete it is also obvious from the table that as we are getting higher compressive strength specific creep per mega pascal is also reducing so with relatively lower grade concrete it is 145 and at 55 mega pascal it dropped to 58 into 10 to the power minus 6 per mega pascal so this is a simple exercise how to calculate shortening due to creep shortening due to shrinkage can also be calculated knowing the creep uh, the shrinkage coefficient multiplying with the length and shortening due to creep is explained here in this simple example for a column of 3 meter 
length concrete of that column is 28 megapascal however column is sustained under a stress of 10 megapascal so in terms of its compressive strength column is sustained to a lower magnitude of stress even less than half of its peak half of its peak will be 14 megapascal so it is 30 to 40 percent of the fc prime so specific creep for 28 megapascal concrete is given here on slide number 28 116 into 10 to the power minus 6 so that is used here so the creep strain will then be specific creep into the sustained stress so per megapascal into megapascal will cancel the stress and we will be left with strain and that is 116 into 10 raised to the power minus 5. So this strain multiplied with the original length will give us the shortening under a sustained load, under a sustained stress of 10 megapascal. So we can visualize that a 3 meter tall column over a span of years may contract to a magnitude of 3 to 4 millimeter under the sustained load. Compressive strength of concrete is established by testing two cylinders as per ACI code 2019 chapter 19 article 19.2.1.1 further states that in no structure a concrete less than 17 megapascal in structural elements is allowed so minimum compressive strength in accordance with aci is 17 megapascal and that will be established by testing two cylinders and then the average of the strength will be used and cylinder to be tested at the age of 28 days must have a dia 150 and length 300 millimeter and testing will be done according to ASTM standards which will be discussed with you in detail in your lab portion however according to British or European standards strength of concrete is established based on cube testing and standard size of the cube is 150 millimeter by 150 and even in bs standard the strength reported will be of the two cubes average of two cubes since cube is relatively less in cross section and depth so the column is little tall it is 300 millimeter high while cube is hardly 150 millimeter high half of the cylinder height so when cube will be placed under the jaws of the machine for crushing test that platens rather than jaw the more appropriate word would be the plate or platen there is one picture here 
like in this picture this is one cylindrical plate which is applying gradual pressure on the cylinder and top and bottom of the cylinder are being compressed through this arrangement while in cube I think there, there might be more good pictures which I can share with you In your lab performance, you will perform crushing test of cube and cylinder. In, uh, in concrete laboratory, there is a machine of 300 ton capacity, Denison. And there are other machines as well, which have little lower maximum capacity. In test floor, we have universal testing machine, UTM which has 100 ton capacity. So the end platens, which are actually confining the cylinders or specimens, cubes, when they are subjected to axial shortening, For example, if you just explore in Google image, so this is the concrete cube and there are still, the picture is not very impressive. So I will share uh, in slides, yeah, this one. Now look at the, this picture. Now look at the, jaws of the machine and they are enveloping the cube so the cube height is 150 millimeter and throughout its depth these jaws will tend to restrain the lateral expansion of the cube during load increment due to the friction at the contact area between the cube and the jaw as well as due to the shallow relatively shallow height these jaws will act like a confinement around the cube and Q will not be free to expand, dilate. So the 
crack appearance during the load increment will be delayed due to this end platen effect it is called end, pl end platen effect these two platens they are actually confining the shallow height cube now if you replace this cube with a cylinder of 300 millimeter height end platen effect is still present but due to slenderness of the cylinder relatively more than cube there will be a middle zone in the cylinder which will not be having much restrainment as otherwise cube is experiencing due to its relatively shallow height so the confinement effect of end platens to restrain the lateral dilation or crack initiation end propagation will not be affected by this confining effect which is termed as end platen effect so that is the reason slender strength will be almost 80% of the cube strength so if you pour the cubes and cylinders by using the same concrete batch so same quality of concrete same fc prime mix proportion you used and you poured cubes and cylinders and then you tested them at the age of 28 days two cubes and two cylinders cube strength you will get will be higher than the cylinder strength the reason is because of end platen effect the confinement which will be offered by end platens due to relatively shallow height of the cube and, and a good equation is that normally cylinder is considered to be 80% of the cube strength so when you want to convert by doing cube testing the strength to equivalent cylinder you need to multiply the cube strength with 0.8 to get equivalent cylinder strength or if you have done cylinder testing and you want to convert it into equivalent cube strength you need to divide that cylinder strength with 0.8 to get cube strength so furthermore there are few uh, conditions which will be explained to you in lab portion how you will perform testing of the compressive strength at which age at site what should be the frequency of uh, sampling and how you will accept or reject a concrete based on the standard cured cylinders testing at after the age of 28 days so all this you will get in chapter 26 of aci and in your lab portion uh, teacher will tell you acceptance criteria for concreting at site and there is one example also given for your reference that how you will accept or reject 
equal it a concrete at site if the strength test results reveal that the required strength is not achieved at site so how you will carry out the testing what are the code guidelines all are explained in these two or three slides which will be also explained to you in lab portion and concrete mix design is also one of the topic in our lab portion and uh, according to this some tables are also included which are important and i think you will get idea in detail once you will perform testing in lab and you will carry out concrete mix design so how to determine modes of elasticity of concrete and uh, the different branches of stress strain curve of concrete that will also be explained in detail in the lab portion some empirical relationships of aci are also available to determine the secant modulus because in concrete unlike steel we have different options of modulus at any point on the curve we can take a tangent to determine the slope and it will be called tangent modulus if i take a tangent at the initial origin i will have initial tangent modulus if i join two points on the curve i will have a secant modulus so in steel we have just one modulus of elasticity which is the sl slope of the linear portion but in concrete since we have non linearity right in beginning so that is the reason there are different definitions and once reporting the modulus of elasticity of concrete you need to report that whether it is initial tangent modulus or chord modulus or secant modulus so based on that e value which is a slope of the line will be calculated and the stress strain curve will be used to determine these moduli and aci has also proposed equation to determine the secant modulus which relates the modulus with the density and with the compressive strength of the concrete under root of c prime so this ec equal to 47 under into under root of c prime is normally used to determine the secant modulus of concrete regarding the reinforcement plane and deformed bars are used and currently deformed bars are used because of the good bond between steel and concrete and uh, in next lecture we will discuss in detail the composite action between steel and concrete and how we determine the maximum bending stresses on the cross section what are the limitations and in next lecture we want to start ultimate stand design of the beam elements ultimate stand design of the reinforced concrete beam elements and our first discussion will be on flexural design so in these slides you will have 
stress strain relationship for steel and for simplification for steel we can also use a simplified stress strain curve elastoplastic without indicating strain hardening domain we can use a bilinear curve to simplify our equations so i think i will stop at this stage in today's lecture so next lecture i will start from the